Hello, I'm Joe here from Action. Welcome to What's on the Tuber. Welcome back. This is your second Perry Mason episode review. Um, so a couple of clarifications before I kick off this week. Um, sorry if I had to change the the way I angle these episode reviews because last week I thought my tripod was completely, utterly broken. I actually fixed it, so I managed to return back to the proper style that usually it is on What's on the Tube. Um, secondly, um, I had made a mistake with uh, one of the characters from last week, so I do apologize. Uh, if you are unaware, I thought the dad, uh, Mr. Dodger, was one of the people in that specific um, scene where the um, the killer is killing all three of the conspirators. I thought that that was the dad. Turns out, no, those are two completely different characters, as we'll get for this episode um, review. It turns out, no, the dad didn't die, uh, so I made a complete mistake. I apologize. I live up to it. Again, it's, it's the first episode of a show, um, and they just look very, very familiar, or maybe my brain wasn't working. Oh, well. Um, anyway, so, with all that back, backdrop out of the way, let's get down to this one. Um, this episode was pretty good. It's pretty good. A uh, little bit of a step down. I mean, actually, where last week's episode gave us a lot of creepy, well, for me personally, a lot of disturbing sexual moments, um, this week um, made up for it in creepy, creepy ways to sh um, of human beings. Um, uh, we'll get to that in the recap. Um, but beyond that, I thought this was a really good episode. We got introduced to a couple more of our main characters for this mini series. As apparently, I just um, 100 percent confirmed that yes, this is a mini series. There will not be any more episodes besides these eight. So it will literally be just this a wrapping time, which will be the first time I'm doing this on the overall history of my show. Um, but overall, back to the actual episode, I really did this dig this one. We did we dug a little bit more into Perry, uh, got introduced to a couple of the new characters, Sister Alice and Officer Drake. And you know we kind of took some a lot of a lot of turns with this um, with this mystery thus far. Again, with this being an eight episode series, um, they don't have much time to spare. Whereas uh, when I was reviewing Nancy Drew, they were they were able to like kind of pad it out a little bit more. They were able to like take their time with the mystery. Where this is like we gotta keep going, man. I mean, it's a mini series. There is no season two here. It's just like we gotta fast and go, fast and go. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I really do like that. We're we're really getting somewhere already. And yeah, so with that being said, let's get down through the butchered recap and go from here. So we begin this episode with a flashback. We we see Perry in I'm presuming presumably at some point during World War One. I. I, the only time I've ever seen World War One in media was in Wonder Woman. That's literally it. And literally this looked like something out of it, which I understand it's a, it's based on a historical event, so there's not really much you can um take uh, there's no really much difference without like really branching off from the source material, i.e. historical material. Uh, so we get to see Perry as the captain or commander, I don't know how ranks work, um, in this um, battalion um, going up against the enemy troopers. And Perry's leading them into battle. And um, it's, a, it, it's war, so it's, it's a very hectic um, environment to be in, especially one of Perry's um, nature. But then we cut back to present day Perry, who is sleeping on the streets so i initially thought this was kind of like oh it's it, this was the flashback to the flashback now we're in the real flashback no it's, it's present day perry's waiting for this um yarn man as i'll call him uh on new year's day and i really feel sorry for this guy like, it's new year's day come on you shouldn't be working on new year's day then again i've worked on new year's day so i don't know what the hell i was saying um so per Perry's there to compare um, samples of the of the of the Fred the yard Fred that he found in the on the child's. Um, I'm, oh sorry, my eyes are actually hitchy. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, the um, the Fred used to sew the um, the eyes the eye um, lids open. He's trying to look for that. There's tons and tons of Fred there, and like, oof, this is really like finding a needle in a haystack, isn't it? Um, and then I believe from there, I don't know where we cut from there. Do we cut to, oof, I'm trying to remember where the frick did we cut from here? Did we cut to, to the, to the, um, I think we cut to Sister Alice. I think this is where we get introduced to Sister Alice. So yeah, I, like I said in the last re, re, uh, episode, there were a couple of characters that we haven't been int introduced yet because there's only a finite amount of you know, room you can tell without really stuffing everyone in there. So thankfully they, they made the smart decision of like holding off a little bit. So we get introduced. So initially I thought like we were heading to like some sort of like, um, 
I don't know. I was watching some show or movie that I don't think is related to this one where we were, I was seeing something similar to this. Like the environment looked very similar, but it turns out, no, this is actually a house of worship um, for God. And this is run by sister Alice, one of the other main characters of the show. Very preachy, very full of energy. And she has a very strong voice. I'll say that. Um, and everyone is like, oh my God, it's like she's preaching the truth here. And again, it's the 1930s, so, um, I mean, again, I, I never had any sort of, like, real life, like, you know, um, examples I can name of of people who really, like, spoke similar to that. But, like, for me, like, damn, like, back in those days, I'm pretty sure, like, if you had a strong voice and you know how to speak, you can, you can rally some people up. Um, so, and then, okay, so, yeah, so after that wraps up, she meets with her mom um, while she is very tired, because I'm pretty sure speaking at that volume of, you know, for that long with those powerful words, it, can, it can't wear on someone. Um, but she has a meeting to attend to. It turns out to be with the Dodgers. Um, uh, she's giving her, giving them the condolences and then she's offering to pay for their funeral, host the funeral, um, make sure the funeral for the little guy. Um, I believe also by that point, the, t the detective shows up, one of the detectives we've seen before. Sorry, the new... I, I'm drinking this new lemon ginger tea, and it's really, like... Oh, it's really... The ginger's really kicking in. It's really kicking in. I really need this energy boost. I... Uh, where do we go from here? Oh, yeah. Um, Texas shows up. Supposedly, they have a lineup to show the Dodgers uh, potential kidnappers. But something's afoot, since we, we, as the viewers, know, like, wait, didn't they just die yesterday? So, there clearly is no lineup. So, what's going on here? So, they take the Dodgers over to the station. Um, I believe EB's also there, too. No, EB's about to show up. Yeah, I forgot. Um... I'm going out of order here. I'm sorry. I just really do not remember how this order went. But we're, we're going we're to go introduce Mr. Drake. Um, Officer Drake. Um, played by... I forgot his name. I really forgot the act, actor's name. But he was on Gotham. I played, he played Lucius Fox for five seasons. Um, George will probably... I, I have to text George about this information. He will probably not like this information. Um, he's settling a civil, a civil dispute between this couple who presumed that... The man presuming his wife cheated on him. Well, it turns out no, because the officer and his wife are also present around the woman in question, so she's in the clear. Um, but Officer Drake, very... How do I say this? Very... He's an upstanding citizen, upstanding uh, member of the police force. Um, considering the fact we've already been set up on this dynamic of, like, the police officers are corrupt, we can definitely see in this guy he's not one of them. Like, he's like the Jim Gordon of... The Gotham City Police Department, where he is like literally one of the shiny examples of still good people wearing the badge, even in a, a department filled of corrupt people. So um, he's handling that. He's about to arrest the uh, man because he pulled the pulled the gun on him. However, he is getting called away by another neighbor because he discovered the crime scene, the the murder scene where we found in the, in the end of uh, last week's episode. So he goes off to investigate. He's you know he's really playing like the, the detective role well, even though he's just an officer. So, he's got that. He's got that in the making for him. Um, so he literally goes throughout the entire sequence. He sees the apartment. He sees the um, the briefcase. He sees the two guys being who were shot dead. Then he goes outside, notices like some. And I'm just I don't know how early it had to be in this in the morning for this to occur. Like, did no one ever just close that door? Did they just leave it open? Okay, uh, he goes on the roof and he's noticing some things are wrong. But when he looks down, um. He doesn't see. I'm presuming we didn't we didn't get a shot of the body that fell, so that was a little bit weird. Um, and then we get to Perry, who is talking to Pete again, who's trying to recruit him to this case. But Pete's still mad at him on the, over the fact that, you know, Perry promised him a lot of money on the last case, the the chubby case. But since Perry fucked that up to get down to one dollar payment, so the six hundred dollars he was trying to get to, uh, obviously Pete's not down for it because he has three kids to feed. Uh, but, you know, Perry manages to convince him to join him on the case since EB is paying for the whole thing. And I think then we get to the, we get to the courthouse, the, the, the police station where, um, instead of showing him the lineup, they show Mr. Dodger his suitcase with a bullet hole through it. And they're trying to like pin him together on, on the murder charge yet again, where, and then before EB's about to like take this, take uh, Mr. Dodger out of the station because to prove his rights and prove, prove his innocence. Enters the district attorney, played by none other than Stephen Root. If you don't know who Stephen Root is, if you watch King of the Hill, um, honestly, man, I mean, I've seen only pictures of Stephen Root. I'm like, 
is this even rude? I'm like, like I guess I can, I can vaguely see the facial resemblance. I'm like, oh shit, this is him. Because he played Bill Daltrey on King of the Hill. And while well, these two are very, two far cries of, the, of different characters. You know what I mean. Um, he kind of like has like enough circumstantial evidence to kind of put him away, keep him under uh, police custody for now. So they arrest him. Um, the wife's in distraught because, you know, he already, she already lost her son. Now she's losing her husband, po- possibly. So they're all kind of leaving, leaving everything. Um, they're leaving the station. Um, and then I believe there was another scene or did we jump somewhere else? I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember. So there was a scene where, um, also during the scene, it turns out that one of the guys that we saw in episode one, the, the guy who was referring E.B. Perry and his E.B.'s assistant to the Dodgers or the Dodgers, the Dodgers. Um, it turns out that's actually the biological father of Mr. Dodger. Um, so, and E.B. goes to talk to him and he says like, well, technically, yes, he is my son. Um, I kind of abandoned him years ago and he, he found me out and we made this agreement like, I'll, I'll pay for you getting down to the t- to town. I'll pay for you getting a business in the area. Like basically trying to b- pay off his son for abandoning him basically. So, we, so we're, we're sort of starting to establish that there is opportunity here since this guy's freaking loaded with money. So I'm given how this was a, um, a bribing matter in terms of like the whole mystery beginning with, it does showcase that, that yeah, there is something afoot here. Um, I don't know where we went here. Perry, Perry and EB have a scene here, but I'm not sure once the guy leaves, but I completely forgot where the hell this was going to go to. So I think we'll cut to the funeral. No, no, no. Perry does some solo. Does he still, do the solo investigation? I don't know what comes for Perry's solo investigation or does he go to, I think, yeah, Perry goes to, to do a solo investigation. He goes talk to Emily again, right after her husband got arrested She's distraught, but she's still not breaking character. She's still very much the same sad wife who's, you know, dealing with a lot right now. Evie's trying to get some information out of her, but she's not budging. Even when Evie's bringing up the possibility that her, her husband might have done something with this whole case. Um, but she's still denying everything. So, um, Perry leaves. He goes to one of the neighbors to kind of, like, try and get some, like, other information out of, out of the Dodger. Trying to get some more evidence. Um, and this woman's bringing up a couple of like interesting new facts that, um, Mrs. Dodger, this is not her first time. Well, well, she's not, well, no, no, there's, there's a, there's a, um, an argument of like confusion as, so the Dodgers, well, she has actually done a lot of late night phone calls, but however, from what we remember from last week, um, she was supposedly sleeping the night of, you know, of her son getting kidnapped. So there is a bit of like. Uh oh, something's wrong here. These stories aren't lining up, and then they literally see her doing the, the exact same thing the woman was talking about um, across the way. So Perry's wondering like something's up here, something's up. Um, and then we cut to we missed the scene. No, no, okay, no, I remember. So Officer Drake is following his report with the detectives about the whole discovering the bodies, uh, talk about the blood trail. However, um, some stuff isn't adding up. Drake is obviously trying to play detective here. He's like, well, I got my own theories about this. But then the, the, the real detectives are really, like, shitting on him. Because um, he's an officer trying to play detective, even though he's not a detective. There, and, you know, one of the other detectives kind of tell him, oh, just change your report. Like, you know, it's not going to make any sense. So just change it. Make it simpler for everyone. So, But Drake knows in his heart, like, nah, something's wrong here. Something's really wrong here. Um, and then we cut, then we cut to um, the funeral house where... Uh, Mrs. Dodger, E.B. and E.B.'s assistant are picking out a casket for her, for the, for the child. Um, uh, uh, Mrs. Dodger doesn't want to be there anymore. She wants to go get some food. So she and the assistant leave while E.B. goes to handle some affairs. Uh, we cut to the diner where um, where Mrs. Dodger and the assistant are... Sorry, I was about to burp there. Sorry. They're talking about stuff and then... Uh, Mrs. Dodger decides she needs to take a minute to like t- to excuse herself. She goes to the phone booth, anxiously trying to call someone, but the guy, but the other person doesn't pick up the line, so she leaves. Meanwhile, all of a sudden, Perry just shows up out of nowhere and just um, tries to recall the number, get the number, trying to get the information. Like, who was she calling? Because you know he's still on, he's he's suspicious on her because of her like recent like things weren't lining up, sort of sort sort of sort of speak. Um. So Perry goes to investigate that, and then we kind of break. Where do we branch out? Oh yeah, so uh, I know we're missing an interstitial scene here. I'm missing it again. Go watch the episode because I'm doing a very horrible job recapping this. But 
I think the next thing I remember was Perry. He finds the address for this number that um, Mrs. Dodger called, and he heads over there. Meanwhile, we cut back to the Drake, to Drake who is um, at home eating dinner with his wife, and he's telling her about her day, and you know his suspicions about the whole case and the whole matter. Um, and obviously the wife asking, well, why didn't you say something? Why didn't you like not change your report? But then she said like, I, I can't quit my job now. I, I got to support you and our future kid. Like, obviously like this guy's very smart. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm liking this guy, right? I'm really liking this, this, this officer Drake. He's really a good, he's a good one. Um, and then we come back to Perry who is, um, checking out the house. But when he finds the owner, it turns out the owner shot his brain. Oof, not a, not a really good way to go. And it's and Perry has to go and check the um, the um, the thing. I, oh my god, I'm trying to now I'm remembering something here. I'm I'm, 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 remem eh, I'm remembering something, remembering something. Um, so this guy, um, it turns out to be, uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a minute. Well, let me finish this this scene first. So Perry goes. And just investigates the guy, but he notices that he has some teeth missing, so that's a he keep that in mind. Then Perry finds a note next to the dresser. It's pretty much a suicide note where he's admitting that I couldn't live with what I've done. Uh, I shot myself. Um, and also, you can find the other two bodies at this address, which I'm pretty sure is the apartment building where Miss Officer Drake was and where last week's events happened. And then Perry goes snooping around the house and he finds these letters. Um, in this like very weird, like it's a really well kept um, area to hide letters, but Perry manages to find it with Emily's name on Mrs. Dodger's name. So she re he realizes that, oh my God, Emily was having an affair with this guy, this George guy. I think that's his name, George. What's his name, George? I'm gonna call it George. Well, I want to annoy George with this. Um, so Perry, in a fit, he heads over to Emily to Mrs. Dodger's house to confront her. Initial, yeah, the name is George. So. Uh, Perry's accusing her of having an affair. At first, Emily's like, no, I never had an affair on him. No, 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 no. And then eventually, you know, once he shows her the letters, once he tells her that she, you know, he died, he's dead, Emily just collapsed, admitting the truth that, yeah, there was an affair. There was something going on here. And Perry just walks away. He, Perry just dead as just leaves the poor woman crying on the floor. On another thing on top of this poor woman's, um tragedy is that she lost her son her husband's in jail and now her lover is dead this woman is not having a great week i'm sorry i'm sorry to be a dick there i'm sorry um then we cut to the next day where eb is mad at perry because he stole evidence from a crime scene um because they can't literally do anything with these letters because it's since they are not admitted to the to the system um they can't be used as evidence so literally these letters are useless like yes it does help with the overall investigation but they can't use it as a piece of evidence at this current juncture um, so Perry's bringing up the theory that maybe it's not Mr. Dodger who did this. It was Mrs. Dodger. Um, who probably orchestrated all this, but the assistant's like, no, impossible. She's, she's too depressed right now. She, she would never do this. So it's like a, a contrasting of opinions here. And, you know, so nothing's lining up here. Even Pete's in the scene, just like giving like random schnarky, schnarky remarks. Um, and then Perry's still very much dead said like, okay, maybe... The the, the 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 balls here like there we're we're getting on 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 where on where it's to something here, um and then I think she um the assistant has a line where she says that um just because you cheat doesn't mean you committed murder so that's a true fact there but considering everything that we know as a viewer and everything they know as characters it's kind of not painting a good picture for Emily right now, um Eb decides to say hey look we'll hold, I'll hold on to the letters for now well we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with them later on but right now we need to like. Just worry on the next thing. Um, then, we, then we had a random scene where um, Sister Alice is preparing for the funeral. She's preparing her speech, her um, eulogy, or I don't know what the hell the freaking terminology is for like her gospel um, during the funeral. It turns out she has a stroke of genius. And then I believe where did we cut? I think we get to the funeral. I think we yeah we're we're up to the funeral and. Yeah, we're up to the funeral part, and then Emil, and then you know we see everyone there. All basically every main character except for Pete is there, and, and also Officer Drake. So they're all there. They're all witnessing this event, and then um, Sister Alice kind of goes on her own, like you know, tangent on things that's wrong with the world on top of the whole funeral thing. And yeah, so everyone's kind of like half like 
worried and half like shocked, so to speak. But while the funeral is kind of wrapping up, we're heading to the graveyard portion of the funeral. Um, the police officers show up to arrest Emily for conspiracy on kidnapping. And honestly, despite this, like, even though we still don't know the full circumstances of this case, um, I, I still got to say it's a dick move for the officers because no matter how you, you're going to write the story later on, the, the woman just lost her son. At least let her finish the whole burial process. At least wait until she had her final moment of grieving. Well, not the final moment, like the more, the last crucial moment of grieving before you arrest him. Like, come on. Like the scene where we see her like trying to grasp for the casket and then her getting pulled away into the police car. It's like, oh my God. I, no matter how they're going to finish up this story. I mean, oh my God, this was, that was a, a, kind of a little hard to watch. Um, but who, who, who fought, who reported on her? Who knows? Um, then we cut to Perry and EB who are kind of like, you know, seeing this as a success because, like, you know, they're they're buying more time to, you know, build up their case. Uh, Perry's not down for the idea. As, you know, Perry still, like, feels like this is not right. This is wrong, so to speak. And E.B. and the, um, the district attorney go off to kind of have a laugh together and Perry leaves the room. Um, then we have, like, this final montage. Oh, yeah, there was more war flashbacks in the middle of all this. Like, Perry uh, was on the enemy lines. He was trying... To, he was making some very tough, tough calls and, like, killing his fellow soldiers not because he was a traitor or anything but because um i think gas was beginning to be a, a major weapon in that war so his fellow troopers were kind of being already slowly being tortured and killed by the gas so perry was debating on trying to just end their suffering and just shoot them in the head um so we were getting that kind of like character you know development well not character development like a, a piece of character development in the past um, and then I think, yeah, then during the scene, uh, Officer Drake goes on a, on a beat walk throughout the city. He returns back to the apartment building and the staircase we saw in the last episode. And although they, they, there's still no sign of the blood, there's still no, like, anything, he does see a pair of denture teeth that were, um, on the floor. And if you remember from the Perry scene with the, when he went to that house, yeah, so these two worlds might slowly start to intersect as Perry is walking through the streets of L.A., kind of like, stumbling on what to do next and that's where we end up this this chapter of perry mason um again i really like this episode i i, I don't know why i, I think I, I enjoy like i don't know if i had to describe last week's disturb some of their off-putting scenes to this week's disturbing scenes i don't really know which one i prefer more but i think they're both really equal amounts of putting this de episode definitely gave us brief glimpses into sister alice and um officer drake's characters giving us a little more backstory on, on Perry and advancing the case further. Who really did it? It could be Emily. It could be, like, there's a bigger conspiracy on the horizon. Um, what happened to Mr. Dodger? Is he going to get out? What does EB have planned up his sleeve? There's a lot of things to worry about here. And, you know, I'm, I'm very much interested on where next week's going to go and how the plot's going to develop very much faster. And hopefully we'll figure out what's the next big twist to lie around the corner. And please, for the love of God, let's not get into the disturbing sex scene. I can't deal with another one. I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to do it for me, guys. So I give this episode two thumbs up. Really enjoyed it. Go watch it. And yeah, I think that's going to do it for me, guys. So if you were unaware, this was What's in the Tube from Action X. If you want to know what we're doing overall on What's in the Tube, we do DC Stargirl episode reviews each and every Friday after a brand new episode on Monday on DC Universe, the streaming service. And also on the CW on Tuesday night, but you can catch it all for free on Wednesday on CW.com and on the CW app. Um, we also do, we are, we have just begun, hopefully, I haven't recorded it yet at the time of this recording, um, DC's Doom Patrol Season 2 episode reviews each and every Saturday after a brand new episode on Thursday on HBO Max and DC Universe, the streaming app. And, however, if you only care about Perry Mason, you can catch a brand new Perry Mason episode review each and every Monday after a brand new episode on Sunday nights on HBO. Um... Yeah, I think that's it. I really forgot what the next segue was. I'm sorry. Um, but again, if you're unaware, this was What's on the Tube from Action X. If you want to see more of What's on the Tube and specifically Perry Mason episode reviews, please subscribe to Action X on YouTube.com. Uh, follow, no, ring the bell for notifications when we have the next episode review live. Like, favor, share if you want to, but it does really help us out in the long run, guys. As well as follow us on social media to be up to date on updates on videos. And I'll see you... Masoners, I haven't. I, I I promise I would look it up for next week. I I, I abolished that. I'm sorry. Um, Masoners next week. Peace out.